Okay, so now the next part of this then is uh, figuring out ratios. And, and normally in chemistry we're talking about ratios of moles, uh, but we'll get to more of that in a second. So uh, look at the ratio I have here. So if, if the school has 30 boys and 60 girls, what is the ratio of boys to girls? Uh, no, our tendency is to say it is a 1 to 2 ratio, but not really. Um, it is a 1 to 2 ratio in its reduced form or its uh, lowest um, form, but it is actually a 30 to 60 ratio. So it's a 30 to 60 ratio. Our brain thinks because we're trained and I recognize that that's a multiple. So uh, 60 is a multiple of 30. So 30 and 60, I reduce that and uh, I get a 1 to 2 ratio. So I'll come back to that in a second. What about this one? If a school has 27 boys and 18 girls, what is the ratio of boys to girls? Uh, notice the title now says, what is finding their whole num a whole number ratio in its lowest term? So now we actually do want to find it in its lowest term. So we're not going to say 27 to 18, but uh, what we recognize here perhaps is that it's, uh, um, they're both multiples of 9. So if you divide them both by 9, you get a 3 to 2 ratio. Uh, now that's whole number, and it's uh, in its lowest term, so I've reduced it again. Uh, the next one, 75 to 60, boys to girls. All right, so may maybe you recognize that this is a multiple of 15, and you can do it right off the bat, but if you don't, maybe you recognize it as a multiple of 5. Um, so you divide each of these by 5, so divide that one by 5, and I get 15, divide by 5, um, and I get... 12, so a 15 to 12, and then I can see I can divide this one by 3, so I get a 5 to 4. Or you recognized it right away, like I said, you could divide that by 15 and get 5, divide that by 15 and get a 4. So a 5 to 4, uh, once again, in its lowest terms. But what about this one? Now this is really the chemistry part of this. A, a compound contains 4.14 moles of Mg and 2.76 moles of P, phosphorus. So now it's a 4.14 to 2.76 mole ratio. And I don't care how good you are at math. Uh, you know, you can't do this like you did the last few, where you're recognizing that it's uh, what its whole number um, multiple would be. Um, and so we have to have a trick. We have to be able to take ratios like this and do them as easy as we did uh, the 30 to 60 or the 27 to 18. Uh, so let me go back to those, and let me show you how to do those. Uh, with the trick. All right, so here's what you're actually doing. So, uh, you know, the algebra of this works like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide in order to find the lowest terms um, or lowest uh, ratio in terms of in the ratio. I'm going to divide them both by the smaller number. So I'm going to look at these two numbers. 30 is smaller than 60. So I divide them both by 30 and I get a 1 to 2 ratio. So that was about as easy as it gets. Um, um, again, I'm dividing them both by the smaller one, and that one worked out nicely. But this one, let me erase our answer here. And so now if I divide them both by the smaller one, so I'm going to divide them both by 18. So I get a 1 there. So let me get my calculator out just to show you that that's what we're doing. So we're doing 27, 27 divided by 18, and it comes out to be a 1.5. So this is a 1 to 1.5 ratio, but it says whole number ratio in its lowest term. These aren't whole, that's not a whole number. Well, we can't just round that, because if I round this to 2, it changes the ratio. A 1 to 1.5 ratio is not the same thing as a 1 to 2 ratio. So what I do is I'm going to multiply that by 2, and whatever I do to that side, I have to do to that side to keep the ratio the same. So 1 times 2 is 2, and then 1.5 times 2 is 3. So I get a 3 to 2 ratio by doing that. Let that sink in for a second. Now, why did I multiply by 2? Well, it's a half. So the way you get rid of the half, make that into a whole number, is multiply it times 2. So you did the same thing to that side, uh, again, to keep the ratio the same. You can't just do it to one side and not the other. And that'll work out every time like this. Um, and oftentimes in chemistry, you end up with 0.5s. Now, there are a few others, uh, but we'll get those when we come to them. Again, let me erase our answers here. Go back to our um, original numbers, which were 75 and 60. So 75 to 60 ratio, divide them both by 60. 60 divided by 60 is 1. 75 divided by 60 is 1.25. So a 1 
to 1.25 ratio. Ah, I recognize that. That's point, or 0.25 is the same as a quarter. So if I multiply this one times 4, I'm going to get a whole number. 4 times 1.25 is 5, and 1 times 4 is 4. So there's how we end up with that one. So here's another one that comes up in chemistry sometimes. A quarter. Um, our focus, though, here in the beginning is they're going to end up 0.5. They're going to be 0.5 or they're going to be whole numbers. And then we'll cross uh, this bridge when we come to it later with 0.25s and the others because they don't happen as often. All right, so now this crazy one before when we looked at it, we couldn't do it because we didn't know in our head the multiple. Uh, but now we have 4.14 to 2.76. We're going to divide them both by 2.76. So 2.76 divided by 2.76 is 1. 4.14 divided by 2.76 is 1.5. So I get a 1 to 1.5 again. Ah, there's that 0.5 again. And again, like I said, that's going to come up quite often. So I'm going to multiply that times 2 because that gives me the whole number 3. And then whatever I do to that side, I have to do to that side or I change the ratio. So it is a 2 to 3 ratio. So now we're going to go a step further, and we're going to write something called an empirical formula. So it says, find the mole ratio between magnesium and phosphorus. Well, it's a 3 to 2 ratio. And then write the formula. OK, the formula then is going to be MG3P2. So a 3 to 2 mole ratio is shown in the formula, uh, but with those subscripts. Now, this is an ionic substance. And the special thing about an ionic substance is the charges are going to work out. Most of the problems we do in this uh, unit are not going to be ionic, uh, because otherwise you could predict the answer beforehand. But it's nice to do that in the beginning. All right, so this is called an empirical formula. An empirical formula is the lowest whole number mole ratio. So the lowest whole number mole ratio between the atoms in a compound. So that's what we just found. Uh, so what about if we're given grams? All right, well, if we're given grams, so a compound contains 0 0.900 grams of calcium, 1.60 grams of chlorine. Find the empirical formula. 0 0.900 grams of calcium, 1.60 grams of chlorine. And I want to find the empirical formula. Well, the empirical formula is the lowest whole number mole ratio. I know how to find ratios. I just divide it by the smaller one. But it's mole ratios, and I have grams. And so my first step is going to be i got to get moles because I can't do this in grams. Uh, so 40.1 grams in a mole of calcium, the molar mass or the atomic mass, since it's an atom, of calcium from the periodic table, the atomic mass of chlorine, 35.5 grams in one mole. But it's still going to get us to moles. You could call it a molar mass. So uh, we need our calculator, 0.9 divided by 40.1. Point zero. Now, if I just leave that zero right there, that does not count as a significant digit. Now, I'm referring, we've been stressing significant digits all year. This number right here only has three, but I want my ratios to work out at the end when I, when I divide by the smaller one. So I'm going to keep an extra significant digit, sometimes even an extra two significant digits. But right now, I don't have any. That's the first significant digit. So two, two, four, four moles of calcium. 1.6 divided by 35.5, I get 0 0.04507 moles. All right, so now I have moles. So now I'm just like the previous problem. I have moles. I need a ratio between these two moles. I can't tell by looking at it. So I have to divide them both by the smaller one. I get a 1 when I divide that one, 0 0.02244. So I need to divide... Uh, that number by, and I get 2.008, which is essentially a 2. At that point, you've got to evaluate your answer. Is it a 0.5? Well, no, it's a whole number. So it's going to be either a whole number, 0.5, um, maybe 0.25, um, and like I said, we're going to talk about some of the others. So I know this is a 1 to 2 ratio. So write the formula. Well, Calcium and then chlorine, they're always written in the right order in the problem. So whatever order the elements are listed, that's the order you write them. So I'm going to write Ca, and there's one of them, because it's a 1. And then chlorine is 2. So a 1 to 2 ratio, the correct formula is calcium chloride. And notice, notice it's another ionic one, so we can actually check the answer. Plus 2, minus 1, and that would be the correct formula if it was a compound of calcium um, and chlorine. Next one, percents. 
All right, so I can't convert percents to moles. I don't, there is no conversion for that. So I need a preliminary step here. And that preliminary step is I'm going to assume that I have 100 grams of this stuff. Now, why 100 grams? Well, it doesn't matter what number of grams you pick, but I have to take 36% of however many grams I pick. So if I picked, let's say I wanted my favorite number of grams, 19.1. 19.1 grams. Well, I have to take 36% of 19.1 to tell me how many grams of aluminum I have. Picking 100 makes it easy because 36% of 100 is 36. So that means I have 36 grams of aluminum. 64.2 grams of sulfur. 64.2% of 100 is 64.2. That makes it easier. So then to further make things nice and easy and uniform and linear, instead of doing the chart to convert to moles like I did here, since I know what I'm doing, I know I have grams, I know I need moles, and I know I have to divide by the molar mass, I like to just do a shortcut there and just write divide by and then write the molar mass. That confuses you, don't do it. 36 divided by 27 is 1.333, keeping an extra significant digit, 64.2 divided by 32.1 is 2, so again, 2.000, keeping some extra significant digits there. So now I have found the mole ratio. It is a 1.333 to 2 ratio, but that is not in its lowest terms. Don't forget you have to find it in its lowest terms, which means i got to divide them both by 1.333. So again, to keep it nice and linear, my problem's easy to see, going straight across. So that's a 1. So now 2 divided by 1.333 is a 1.500. So again, we're at the step now where we've got to evaluate that answer. Uh, is it a whole number, or is it a half, or is it a quarter? Um, the other ones are a third, or two-thirds, or three-quarters, but this one is 0.5. So I'm going to multiply both of those by 2 and make it a 2 to 3 ratio, to 3 ratio. So then the formula, Al2S3, a 2 to 3 mole ratio of aluminum to sulfur. And again, it's ionic, minus 2 plus 3, so you can see they, it worked out again. This one, though, is not ionic, but uh, a covalent. Problem. How do I know covalent? Well, it's carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, all nonmetals. Once again, I have percents. Uh, so once again, I have to do a preliminary step of assuming I have 100 grams of this stuff, or your favorite number of grams. But then you've got to do a percent problem, and the percent problem when it's 100 is easy. So there's how many grams of carbon, grams of hydrogen, and grams of nitrogen. We remove the uh, empire stripes back, the empire goal formula. Divide by the molar mass. So 62 divided by 12, the molar mass of carbon, 5.167. Keeping an extra significant digit, 13.9 divided by hydrogen, 13.76. Now, I have kept you in the habit of including three digits for the mass of hydrogen, 1.01, 1.008 on the periodic table. If you leave it at one, a lot of people do that. Look up stuff on chemistry teachers on the internet. They use one. Your ratios, when you convert the next step, which is divide by the smaller one, just don't work out as well when you use one. Um, so the whole reason for me doing that all year is just for problems just like this, where you're trying to find ratios. 24.1 divided by 14. 1.721 moles. All right, so I got my mole ratios. Now I need the lowest whole number mole ratio, so I got to divide them all by the smallest one, which is this one. So I'm going to divide them all by 1.721. So here's the next little shortcut I do, is I know I'm dividing by the smallest one, so I don't even write it. I just go right to the ratio. So now I need 13.76 uh, divided by 1.721. And you can see I get 7.995. So again, this is the step where I'm evaluating. Is it a whole number? Is it a 0.5? Is it a 0.25? Uh, 5.167 divided by 1.721. And that's 3.00. So you can see this one ended up a whole number right off the bat. So it is C3H8N. 
So again, the order listed in the problem, C, then H, then N. So C, 3, because it's 3 to 8 to 1 mole ratio of carbon to hydrogen to nitrogen. So that's an empirical formula. Uh, there's really no variations in this that we can ask very much, um, either given percentages, or you could be given grams right off the bat and not have to do the percentages. Uh, but either way, you're going to convert to moles, find the ratio by dividing by the smaller one, and then either ending up with a whole number or ending up with a uh, common fraction uh, such as 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.25, uh, et cetera, et cetera.